And then the battles. The battles are everything. And I think mangas do it great. Animes can perfect them. Like a great anime, like Naruto. I recently reread all of the manga. And the one thing that I missed out in the manga was the Obito Kakashi fight, which was one of the coolest fights ever put to pen on paper or computer generated. <laughs> don't know how they do it. But again, you don't get that in the manga. So I'm like, to me, those battles mean so much. You are listening to the Mana Podcast from Netflix. I'm your host, Matt Owens. I'm a screenwriter, a co-showrunner on the upcoming live-action adaptation of One Piece from Netflix, and, most importantly, a lifelong anime fan. The Mana Podcast stands for Manga, Anime, Netflix Adaptation. We're taking a negative and we're making it our brand. And it's an opportunity for us to talk about our love of all things manga and anime. My goal for this podcast is to bridge the gap between Hollywood and the anime community. I know that there's been some mistrust between the two in the past, but what me and my guests all have in common is we work in the entertainment industry and we love anime. I want to give a platform to some great people to have in-depth conversations about the aspect of anime that keeps us coming back. The things that make us laugh, cry, you know, all of those wonderful gooey emotions. Basically, we're going to talk about what makes the genre so important and so special. So I've invited some of my closest friends to chat. We're going to keep this fun and casual, and we're glad that you've decided to join us. This is the Mana Podcast. Oh, also, there will be spoilers, so check the podcast description for the list. Today, I have a very special guest with me in the studio. A man who needs no introductions, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. You know him from the Grand Budapest Hotel from the Spider-Man films, and most recently, Willow on Disney+, Plus and the upcoming Scream 6, the one, the only, Tony Revolori. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, friend. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm so happy to be here. Before we begin, even though I gave you the greatest introduction that you've ever received in your career, why don't, you, why don't you introduce yourself to our viewers? Again, yes, I'll introduce myself again because I need two introductions as opposed to none. That's how powerful you are. Oh, wow. I love it. You switched and doubled down. Okay. I am Tony Revolori, a self-professed geek, nerd, and my credits in that realm will be tested today. That's right. But I think I'll pass. Well, let's start there then. Why don't we start with a couple of your uh, your anime credits? What was the very first anime? It was Toonami. Hell yeah. And I can't tell you what it was, but I could tell you it's one of four. It was either Bleach, One Piece, Naruto, or Dragon Ball Z. As was any kid born in the 90s watching early 2000s Toonami at, right before Adult Swim, right after Cartoon Network. Well, this is already a good place to start to get people angry at you. Of those four, which is your favorite? <laughs> One Piece. Yeah? One Piece. One Piece is the one. One Piece has been the one that, that was always great. But, like, my brother and I, we always, like, fought for we, for whatever reason because we were so similar. It's like, you can't choose the same favorite as me. So we had to pick. And I chose One Piece. He chose Naruto. And we both equally loved Dragon Ball Z. And then we both liked Bleach too. And then, um, I don't know, the anime stopped. But it's back now. It's back. And Thousand it Year Blood back. War has been it's good. so good. So good. Beautifully animated. Great and I think fights. I think they're like cleaning up what is slightly weird in the manga too. It's been fun to see too though, because there has, you know, there's a general consensus that the Bleach anime kind of petered out, kind of shit yeah. the bed in the ending. And it's really nice to see a redemption arc for such a beloved series. Yeah, I, completely. And I think beyond <clears throat> even just the anime petering out, I think they fumbled the ball just a slight bit with the last great arc, which was Aizen. Mm -hmm. And then they tried to pick it back up with Fullbringer arc, and that just wasn't a good arc anyway. So everyone was like, well, we're good. And plus, there were so many great, New stories coming out, new anime mangas, um, mangas, excuse me, because someone's going <laughs> to comment will come on after that, you. mangas, that came out like Fairy Tale and My Hero Academia that kind of were the new kids that said, it's okay, you can, you can go home and go to bed now. And yet, One Piece 
has <laughs> continued. And has outlasted so many of them. And it's incredible. So your early anime are actually very on point for what we want to talk about today. Today's Fantastic. episode is is really about shonen, shonen yeah. series, okay. the concept of it. And so there's a lot of debate about what classifies as shonen. So when you think of what makes a shonen manga or anime, what are the characteristics for you? It's either a group or an individual who is very young or has childlike sensibilities. You're going to have a lot of action, and you're going to have an interesting world that has a new thing. At least that's what I think about with Shonen. And for the most part, for whatever reason, you'll always love the number two guy more than the main character. Interesting. Like, think about it. Right? Fairy tale. Gray. A lot the of The best people. character in the series. Sure. Wait, okay, wait, who's, sure. okay, who's your favorite fairy tale character? Um, either Erza or Gildarts. Or, no, no, who's that guy, the cosmic guy, Erza's boyfriend, who he uses in, in, in everything? Oh, 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 oh. Has, what's his name? But you know what I'm talking about. I know, know what, what you're talking, talking about. about. I know, okay, I guess it's time for a fairy tale rewatch. Yeah, but either way, I think he, he is probably my favorite character. Okay. But again, the shonen characters, like, you think about it, it's always the cool, dope silent type that like every young boy wishes they could be but they're actually way more like the protagonist they eat way too much they're very loud and they're horrible kids to their parents you're not wrong because there is there's a lot like people love Zoro. Zoro mm -hmm. has beaten luffy in popularity, in popularity. polls before completely people love sasuke. sasuke yeah exactly sasuke uh, arguably is more popular than naruto Arguably, the manga should have been about and could have been about him, and everyone would have been like, yeah, that's who we want to follow. But, of course, you have to follow the great-natured, interesting. But it is changing. Like, you look at Jujutsu Kaisen, and you're like, mm -hmm. wow, interesting. Okay, it's changing. Do you not think that Yuji falls into that same category, though, as some of the others? He does, but he's, he's not... He's not naive. He's not as dumb as normal. Like, you look at Black Clover and a bunch of these other guys, it's like, I'm not going to come up with a plan. You guys tell me what to do. I'm going to grab whatever weapon or fisties, and I'm going to go beat the crap out of someone. You guys figure out all the other little things. While Yuji in Jujutsu Kaisen has his own sense of intelligence and can come up with his own plans, and that's something that I haven't seen in a jump shonen in a long time. Maybe like Fire Force, that guy. Um, yeah, no, you're right. He is more intelligent. I think another really good example of an atypical, I guess, shonen protagonist that we have right now is Denji. Yeah. yeah. Denji is a bit of an idiot, sure, but not in the same way that <laughs> no. like Goku and Luffy are lovable yeah. idiots. Denji, he's a lot more degenerate than we normally Completely. see in a main character. Which is, it's really fun to see that shift happening where no one wants to like cookie cutter type that is there. And even like, you know, we're bringing it back constantly to One Piece here, but Luffy, chapter one to chapter now 1064, 69, almost 70, he has shifted so much and matured so much. I mean, like he's still quite naive and everything, and that's his characteristics and everything, but he comes up with plans. He makes different choices that the Luffy from... I don't know, 15 years ago would never have made, 20 years ago never would have made. Yeah. So when you think of a shonen anime, mm -hmm. what is it that comes to mind first? Like we're talking about some characteristics of main characters, but what yeah, are yeah. some other elements of it? You mentioned before, like the worlds. battles. Yeah, battles oh, okay. and worlds, yeah. right? Like I always find there are different worlds and quite the escapism, which I love dearly because it lets your imagination run wild and you always have interesting, cool, weird powers and then the battles. The battles are everything. And I think mangas do it great. Animes can perfect them. Like a great anime, like Naruto. I recently reread all of the manga. And the one thing that I missed out in the manga was the Obito Kakashi fight, yeah. which was one of the coolest fights ever put to pen on paper or computer generated. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. But again, you don't get that in the manga. So I'm like, to me, those battles mean so much. And Dragon Ball Z, I think, is the one that like really set it apart because that it literally is just about, 
I'm going to punch you, and I'm going to punch you harder than anyone else can punch you. Yeah. And you brought up a really interesting point also that, you know, at least personally, Shonen Jump is the undisputed. Like, everything that they yeah. print, like, that's what people really think of. But you mentioned Fairy Tale, and, like, there are some very good yeah. series that aren't— I know Fairy Tale is polarizing within the anime community. <laughs> I'm a fan. I Even don't like care Fire what people Force say. Fire, yeah, no, same, Fire Force. And, you know, you have things like uh, Shaman King, Seven yeah. Deadly Sins. Like, there are a lot of other really good series that are out there that aren't just in Jump, but they do still have these same qualities that yeah. you're talking about. Like, that is what makes a shonen Absolutely. a shonen. You know, in its base definition, shonen is young boy. But mm. what's interesting, yeah, like that's kind of the difference. Is like shonen is it's named for that target audience. Oh, it's made. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's yeah, named yeah. after that target audience. Wow. But you have on the other end shojo, which is for young girls. But I know, especially at least for me, when I was growing up and watching stuff, I loved. Sailor Moon and Cardcaptor Sakura as much as I did sure. One Piece and yeah, yeah, Naruto yeah. and Bleach. So I, I love seeing everyone loving things that might not necessarily be tied You have a lot of young girls. You have a lot of female fans of the shonen genre. Completely. And I love that we're seeing a lot of people just embracing good stories and good characters, even if technically they're not the target <laughs> audience for what the the particular series might be. But I think the categorization of this is meant for them, that is meant for this, is slowly disappearing as people's likes, wants, and needs are ever shifting. And that's what's so much fun, is there needs to be no... Shame, no need for you to feel weird about watching something that might not be meant for you, but that's okay. Watch it anyway, because it is meant for you, because it's meant for everyone. And so within that, one of the critiques mm -hmm. that you kind of see of Shonen more specifically is yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't have good female characters. Shonen series don't have good okay. female characters. Interesting. You know, Sakura from Naruto is a big, she's kind of unfortunately like the poster child of that idea. And by the way, I agree. I agree with you also, <laughs> but the point that I'm trying to make is it's not entirely true. It might be situationally no, no, true. of course. But like you brought Erza, Erza up before, who is incredible. One of the best yeah. female characters in a show. One of the best um, characters, period, period in, yeah. in Shonen. Mm -hmm. what, are some, what are some other female characters that you love from Shonen series? Attack on Titan, you have you have many of them. You have Sasha, you have I mean that show just does characters in general well, but Sasha, Mikasa, and Annie. Yes. It's like both all three of them are incredible characters with their own characteristics that I love. Then you have well, Chainsaw Man is like the the, the new one, right? Where you can really Wait, have we talked about this yet? Oh, you think Are no. you are you a power or a Makima? Can I say neither? And that ends this episode <laughs> of the Bottom Podcast. Thanks for your time, Tony. Listen, no, how can you? What? I, I have yourself. more power than Makima, but like Makima is just a horrible human being. And it makes for an incredible character because, again, talking about women not being written well, that here's a woman who probably would have been written as a man, but written as a woman and is interesting because she's a woman. Power is waifu. Power is like, all right, if, if, I'm picking someone to marry here. Her. But I can't remember her name. One eye patch. Ghost oh, Devil. Jimeno. Jimeno. Jimeno's number one for me. Yeah, we know. We 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 do love Jimeno around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, those are, those are good choices. Did I, did, I, did I survive? For not just immediately saying power above everyone <laughs> else. Yeah, you, you did a fine Jimeno's number job. one for me. Then it's power. I respect it. Thank you. I respect it. As, as long as I didn't say Makima. As long as and look, what I think is interesting <laughs> about that though is, I don't like Makima. Yeah, but it's clearly. because Makima is such a good character. It's mm -hmm. it's who she is and what she does that makes me dislike her. But right. that's just a well written character can be a character who is hated also. But I think that's the issue is that we have our own personal perceived notions, and I think even though it's shonen and they're saying shonen as a problem, it's how we view women as well that I think is a very interesting thing, right? I Sometimes if you don't like a character, that might be very, very intentional, but you don't like her and then you go, well, I hate that character and she's written poorly because we expect, we want the waifus, we want the, the, the women who do the stereotypical thing, which is like kind of hide behind your shonen king and then, you know, battle, 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 and maybe they're strong enough too, and you're like, cool, but, like, he's the one who's going to 
do the final punch. So I think it's also the way that we look at women in Shonen that is an issue. And Urza was a great combination. It's like, I'm going to beat the big bad. Natsu, Gray, you guys sit in the corner. I got this. And that's what's great. And I think a lot of people were able to kind of accept that a lot easier and it's something like that. But while, like you just said, Makima is a gr- incredibly written character, yet you hate her. And then in most people's minds, like, because I hate her means she's poorly written. Right. Because we all want to like and slash love a woman in a shonen anime. Yeah. No, it's it's a, it's a false equivalency because I, mm-hmm. I do. I, I believe that if, if a character is well written, you hating them is not yeah. – that isn't a bad thing. It's still a commentary. You have a full, strong full metal opinion alchemist, on someone. Right? Full Metal Alchemist had Envy and Lust, two incredibly written characters. But it works because you knew that they were villains from the beginning. What's interesting about that is I think that also applies not just to how women are written and shown in, but, you know, as to people mm-hmm. of color. Yeah. That's also a big conversation in this space as more fans yeah. come in about that sort of representation. And there's actually, there's a YouTuber who I really like called Blank Thoughts who mm. has a series yes, on- I know Blank what Thoughts. It, do you? Yeah, on yeah. what it means to be black in different series. And it's a oh, re- he makes a very interesting point of, we're not asking for quote unquote black or Latino representation in the same point. Because when you, when you give what is a stereotypical person of color character, yes. you get stereotypical, stereotypical characters. characters. It's just about having a well-written character who happens to be a person of color. And it it refers the same way for a woman. And I think in one of his videos, one of the best examples he gives, which I fully agree with, is Yoruichi in Bleach. (gasps) Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is an incredible character. And there isn't really anything about her character or the journey that she goes on that is so rooted in the fact that she is a person of color or a woman. She's Uh just an awesome character. And like, that's yeah. such a great way to insert representation. He, his, his point is bleach is one of the shonen that does it the best. Cause there are, there are a lot of different people of color. I mean, even from just looking at the main cast, you have Chad who's half Mexican and half Japanese. And that is a part yeah. of his character. The, you know, the discrimination oh, wow, that he right. yeah. suffers in that show yep. has made him such an outsider, but he is an integral part of as this much group, of an integral yeah, part as, as he can be with a shonen. Yes, because you know, when, once you kind of really start to bring in the other Shinigami and stuff, then they, the Karakura like, town, those characters those, go yeah, away. Yeah. Other than Orihime, they go away yeah, a little yeah. bit. But well, yeah, of course, because she's got the almighty power of turning back time. Yes, uh, <laughs> but like I think that applies to to people of color as well. Yeah, is absolutely just just write a good character who happens to be, and people will flock to them. Yeah, exactly. Which I think is, I mean, like, you look at One Piece and it's like, they don't have ethnicities, really. I mean, they're drawn the way they're drawn, but until Oda put out and said what ethnicity they come from, then people started really kind of claiming that person as their own and whatever. But in all honesty, it's everywhere. And he takes inspiration from everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, Brooks is inspired off of Slash. It's like, you know, at that point, what do you, that's that character. And it's dope. So what are, in you know, in the, the vein of talking about representation in Shonen mm-hmm. series, what are some of the things that you think Shonen series can improve on other than representation? We've covered that a little bit, but are yeah, there yeah, other yeah. things that you're like, okay, when I look at the genre, are there things that are stale to you? Are there things that you think that it could do different or better? Of course. I wouldn't call myself the leading authority. And the no, things that me. I want, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's you. The things that I would be interested in is more a reflection of myself and where I am now. I would love to see more thoughtful, dramatic storytelling. I I would love to like cry with these characters a little bit more. Um, and you have it in so many of these series, like um, you know, even rereading Naruto when when Guy Sensei opens the eighth gate and he's like, you know, we see his backstory. Like it, it makes you tear up, and I love that, and I want more of that. But I think I'm also more partial. And more sympathetic and understanding to those things now that I'm 26 years old and I want and I know and I've experienced some version of this while I have an 11-year-old little brother and he's reading One Piece for the very first time. And I saw no tears out of his eyes when, 
you know, Nami is crying and he puts the hat on on things. And he's, I mean, like, he's clearly emotional, but he's not, like, it's not fully set in for him. And I'm like, wow. So to be honest, I don't want anything to change in Shonen. I do, but that's my own selfishness. And I think what they're doing is great. And the evolution that is already happening with Attack on Titan and Jujutsu Kaisen and, you know, kind of the more, and Chainsaw Man and how different and darker the storytelling is going is evident to the authors growing up with their readers. But I also want something for the new generation to come and read again and and be laughing and crying to and be for their generation. Because again, at 11 years old, my little brother's not watching Chainsaw Man. He's not. And, and so I don't want to alienate the new generation that is coming. And of course, they have all the material that we've had in our past to kind of read and watch and 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 whatever, but um, yeah, I, I again selfishly, I would love it to continue skewing more older and and having more dramatic moments. But at the same time, I'm happy with where it's at. And besides the representation, which we've already said, no, you're right. And what what's fun is I think we are seeing because you're right. A lot of creators, Kohei Horikoshi, Tatsuki Fujimoto, yeah. a lot of these guys are like they're our age. They yeah. came up with this stuff and they're in their, you know, like early 30s and they've yeah. lived they've experienced a lot of the same things that we have. They have grown up with a lot of the same content that we have been consuming and they're taking that to another level. So I think you're right. It's an interesting thing to look at, you know, when you have those classic like the big 3 and things like that and to see yeah. where we've been moving into. I think there is an emotionality. One of the things that I love the most about My Hero Academia is Deku is an incredibly emotional character. Character. Exactly. He's prone to crying and like sometimes they make fun of him for that, but he is a character who isn't afraid to feel and to show his emotions. And that's something that I think is really nice to be giving to audiences. 100%. One of the most emotional arcs in, in One Piece history, in my opinion, is Water 7. The moment where Usopp and Luffy are fighting each other for the going merry. That to me is peak writing in in what could be emotional stakes and everything. And you see so many writers starting to do that. And it's incredible. And also, we've always had the darker stories leaning towards that. Like Death Note was always like, all right, you have your intelligent guy who's a megalomaniac and blah, 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 with L and 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 it's still got the shown in tropes. Anime at this point has become so big much like music where now you can find any subgenre 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 of music that is exactly what you want and anime i think is following that same trend because it's becoming so big where i want to show an anime that has a little bit more heart or this or that and it's like you can there's so much out there now that you can find the thing that you want yeah, and they're they're expanding. You're right. They're expanding what that definition is and the kinds of things. Because mm-hmm. you even look at Shonen Jump in recent years, they've had massively successful series like We Never Learn, which is a yeah. comedy harem series <laughs> in Shonen Jump. And right yeah, now, yeah. one of my favorite manga of 2022, Blue Box, is just a sports romance <laughs> series. But I read that at the same time that I read the new chapter of One Piece, and yeah. it's like it's cool that that kind of story can be told (laughs) alongside some of these really completely battle-heavy power anime. And that's the evolution of where we're at, of any medium that gets to that point, which is incredible. And I mean, the thing that I'm loving even more now is that you're having anime being made not just in Japan, which is great. And like Netflix has done such an incredible job of like championing that kind of push to be like, why don't we do it? And I think the first successful version of it was Avatar and the Last Airbender. Yep. I mean, that's an anime with American sensibilities because it's American writers, but they, they made an anime and everyone here ate it up still. And so it, it's just that evolution, which I'm so excited about. And, you know, new anime coming up, uh, you know, I, I'm excited for the day that maybe I can invent or create my own. Yeah. yeah. No, it's fun to talk about what the term anime just on the whole means anymore because you're right. There are some people who say Last Airbender is an anime. It just is. 
You have some people who say it wasn't made in Japan, so therefore it anime. can't be. Yeah. So where that line is, because there's a there's a lot of series like that. You look at like Castlevania. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, an yeah. anime. Yeah, it is. Oh, I don't I don't care what people say. Same with like you look at uh, the Dragon Prince. Yeah, it, it, it's an anime. Dota. It's like they're taking these inspirations, but then it's not just inspirations. If you're doing the same thing, right? Like you're not going to say someone playing Latin music, but he's from Switzerland, you wouldn't say, well, that's not Latin music because they're not Latin. No, it's still Latin music just played by someone who might not have grown up exactly where this thing was popular. But that's not, that doesn't discount what was made and the product itself and what it is. And I think, again, like you and I were saying, anime is growing and evolving and now it's reaching itself into so many different territories. But more than anything, it's becoming popular in the States. I'm really glad that teenagers nowadays don't have the same issues I did of being called a nerd and, like, girls not wanting to talk to you because you were wearing a Dragon yeah. Ball Z t-shirt from Hot Topic. Exactly. I, I mean, I, I made a movie about it. Not, I was in a movie about it called Dope. And, like, that movie is so telling to the time of even... Five to eight to ten years ago, yet now everyone in school, my little brother's talking about anime with all of his classmates, and they're all running around recesses doing Kamehameha's and, you know, Detroit smashes and stuff like that. And, and I mean, I wish I grew up in that era, but at the same time, I'm happy to have paved the way. And, you know, I'm glad that I don't have to be called an Oreo anymore or coconut. It's made us resilient. Yeah. It's made Indeed. us resilient. Thick skin and gorgeous skin. By the way, I just have to mention you have gorgeous skin. Oh, thank you so much. We'll trade uh, moisturizing regimens later. Do you actually have a moisturizing regimen? I don't. I just naturally look like that. Me too. That's a friendship high five right yes, there. Yes, it is. Go on. <laughs> All right. We've, we've, we've had some good talks. We've agreed on a lot of things. Yes. Now I want to try and fight you. Oh, fight me. What's what? your hottest shonen take? Oh, God. What is something that you love that's universally hated? What's something that you hate that's universally loved? Um, oh, my God. Okay. Ooh, okay. I'm going to stir a little bit of a pot here. <sighs> Should I say it? Say it. <laughs> well, you might agree, but I think Ichigo and arguably most of Bleach and the ending of Bleach is better than the ending of Naruto. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I I do not agree, but... Okay. Well, you see my point. I don't. What I will give you is, I think the Soul Society arc in Bleach is one of the best arcs mm -hmm. in shonen manga history. Yes. Ever. All time, to this day, one of the best. Fair. That said, both Bleach and Naruto are... Guilty of extreme highs and extreme lows. Agreed. I think the highs of Naruto outnumber the highs of Bleach. Because while you've got Soul Society on one side, I, I think you've got the Chunin exam. And what I what is my favorite arc in all of Naruto is the Sasuke retrieval arc. Okay, fair. But you have Waco Mundo and the Iran cars and Vizards and... Okay. I guess really, we're fighting. Are the, we're fighting are the Vizards like a point? Like they're they're cool, I guess. But is yeah. that really? Are you gonna put? Are, is no, that something I'm not, you're gonna I'm have not, to platform no, bleach? I'm not. But like Waco Mundo and Ulkiora and Grim Jow are phenomenal. In that, those fight scenes and also Aizen, I think, is a much better villain and a clearer villain. Every time Naruto beats someone, that it's always, you win and now I'm your friend and I will do one last thing for you because you're such a beautiful soul. Thank you very much. While in Bleach, it's like, nah, you beat me. Thank you. That was a good fight. You got me. And like, I think it's more realistic. It's more fun. And you're right. But the fact that it's 40 chapters from Obito to, <laughs> to Madara and being the ultimate bads and bads and then Kaguya, it's like, and then now with Boruto... I think he's, I don't want to say making it worse, but like now that they're aliens who give the things and, the, and I'm like, oh man, you ruined such a cool world by explaining way too much of it. While Bleach is like, look, we explained it, but it's also like still contained to this secular thing. And even, 
again, I agree with you in saying Bleach has lower lows than Naruto ever did, but I think the highs of, of Bleach are better than the highs of Naruto. And I adore Naruto. <laughs> While, while I do disagree with that sentiment, I will concede to you, villains are better done. Bleach Eisen is a yeah, yeah, yeah. phenomenal villain. And you're right. The whole, this is the main villain of Naruto. Nope, it's this person. Nope, yeah, it's this. I, and then Kaguya comes out of nowhere. Nowhere. All of a sudden. Last 30 pages. I can't I mean, 30 fault chapters. you for that. Also, I just, the other thing that I will agree with you on is I'm Naruto <laughs> killed my favorite character in that series and Bleach didn't. So I will always have... Wait, wait, okay, okay. Neji? Yes. I, we've talked the great, about this. Yes, the greatest character in the entire series. And by the way, having reread that, I was a little disappointed that there weren't more chapters or more of a moment. And I don't know why I remember reading that for the very first time. And there's a moment where he whispers in his ear. And, and I thought he had said like, yo, my cousin loves you. Be with her. In the official Viz translations, it's like, Everyone loves you. Let's all be happy. And I'm like, what? No. Let Neji be selfish and be like, yo, I'm going to do one last good thing for Hinata. And I'm like, ah. It To me, it just, as impactful as that could have been, you throw it away instantly. And then not 10 chapters later, Shikamaru's about to die and he makes it. But you're like, no, 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 no. If you're going to give us someone dying or give us a couple of people dying, even Shikamaru's dad dying, he was a small character, but it like leveled out where... He got to say his goodbyes. He got to like say like, oh, funny joke. You know, that shed that I have in the back with you, like just destroy that before mom. It's like, that's great. Neji didn't have that moment. It should have been a good two chapter moment or give us like some backstory of him training and being like, yo, Hinata, you and I made up and blah, blah, blah. Nothing. He just dies. But now I have to ask, who is your favorite Bleach character? Soy Fam. Ah, really? Yep. Hot take, she's one of my least favorite. What? I don't like her at all. Why? Because you don't like strong women? <laughs> oh, <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? Yoroichi is phenomenal and I love her. She's yeah, my waifu you know, forever. And you know who her waifu is? Soy Fong. So, no, Soy Fong's waifu is Yoroichi. Yes. She's following her around like a little cat. No. Yoroichi is not. Disrespectful. No. Disrespectful. No. <laughs> and who's your favorite Bleach character? Um... Oh man, probably <sighs> Itsugaya. Okay, no, that's a Ice. very that's a good, safe, basic answer. I know. I was I've always been into ice powers since I was a kid. So I was like, come on, come on. And also like he was a genius and great hair, very young genius who could do a bunkai. I was like, I want that. No, I want to be that a good guy. Character. Okay, so that's interesting. That's you know, you, you like, see a couple recurring sometimes power themes or abilities or something. Yeah. So let's talk. We, we've talked about Hitsugaya. We've talked about Grey. Let's talk about some more ice characters. What's your thoughts on Kuzan from One Piece? The best ice character in any shonen anime whatsoever. Not only is he powerful, and I think what Oda does beautifully is just because they have a power that other people have used before, he finds new, interesting, inventive ways to use them. All right, this guy uses ice powers. So now he's going to ride a bike on the ocean. He's going to make a ring around the Ten Rings Island for when they did the Foxy Pirate stuff. You know what oh, I'm talking about. Long, long ring, long road. Lo, lo, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, he's like, here's an ice thing. It'll last like a week. Feel free. And I'm like, that's so dope. But then the more we find out about him, he's just so dope. Not only is he smart and intelligent, but he's also peaceful and resourceful. And to me... That makes for such a great character. And I'm so excited now, spoilers alert, that, I mean, we all kind of knew that he was, I mean, with Blackbeard, but now officially we saw him there. Do you think that's true, though? Do you think he's I actually with Blackbeard? No. No, I, I subscribe I, to the theory that he's undercover. That he's, he's, he's undercover. A, he's a member he's of a, S.W.O.R.D. and he's going undercover Sword in one of the most dangerous. Yes, either. Either. But I... I refuse to believe he's actually aligned with Blackbeard. I agree. I think he's just there to make sure he's like, if you get too close, I'm going to stop you. But the issue is, at a certain point, you're helping him amass so much power. Will you be able to even stop him by the time it gets there? I mean, look at all of his stacked crew. Which, by the way, I'll give credit to Law. I thought Law is like the only powerhouse in his team. But his, his crew's like coming together. I'm his so crew. tired of people... <laughs> People shitting on Beppo. Law all the time. They're Beppo always is, like, Law Beppo is 99.9% of the power on his crew. No. 
He's ninety. He's ninety. Not anymore. <laughs> after the after those chapters, the the heart pirates versus the Blackbeard pirates put some respect on Shachi and Penguin and Beppo and John Bart okay, and Beppo, all the rest of the. I'm group. not giving you Beppo, but Why? I'm giving you everyone else. Beppo Why didn't do anything. Beppo? Beppo was like, oh my god, you're hot as a woman, and that's all he did in those chapters. I'm telling you, at some point, <laughs> Beppo is gonna bust out his Sulong form, and everyone is going to pay respect. It's I mean, gonna happen. Give it to me. I'm ready for it. Give it to me now. But until that moment, I'm. I'm shitting on him. No, I refuse. Um, but also, I've won the take. Bleach is better than Naruto. I I you, you don't won. think I don't think you do. If, no, no, I won. Okay, I won. this is you know what we'll do in the comments. I want people to vote. That's nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bleach or Naruto? This is the discussion. No, 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 no. But like, I, you have to watch this and then vote. You have to hear my points and why well, they're not going to help you. That's me. <laughs> My, my, you have to hear what I'm trying to say here. I thoroughly would much rather read Naruto than Bleach. But, but as an objective storyteller in a industry of storytelling, Bleach, I think, has a more cohesive story. And they both fall into the, you're the chosen one, you have all the powers, blah, 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 blah. They both have their faults. And, you know, again, like I said, Bleach has some lower lows, but I think I think their highs are way cooler, man. And and I think their fight scenes are way cooler. Okay, so if you're, you're Bleach over Naruto in that particular mm-hmm. argument, what to you is the number one undisputed best shonen series? I, I've, I've said it and I'll say it again, One Piece. And I'll, I, the thing is, the way I view it is what world would I would love to live in, right? The Naruto world is cool. But, like, you kind of have to be the chosen person to kind of get anywhere. Like, even reading the last chapters, Kiba was like, I want to be Hokage. And everyone was shut up. <laughs> and it, it was sad. And he probably had a an amazing dream to actually do it. And they were like, sit down, kid. No, 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 no. Not for you. <laughs> it's for one of them, too. So it's just like, ah, don't love that. Bleach, I feel like, is an, one, not only do I want to have, like, an eternal best friend and it's on Pakto. Because I would make that person my best friend <laughs> or sort or thing or I don't know, how, whatever. But like, I think the world is interesting to like continue your power structures. And then One Piece is just the most free, fun world. You can be powerful with a devil fruit without one. You can have fun with a crew. You can change. You can do this. And the world is already massive, yet we've probably not seen all of it. Like we've barely seen any of the east, west, south, or north blue. And on the Grand Line, we've only seen the islands that our crew takes. So I'm like, what are the, like, to me, the world just seems so huge that I would want to have fun. Not only that, but I'd want to have fun with my friends. And I think that is the point of One Piece. So to me, that's what I would want to do. But now let me ask you a question. If you can get any of the, any power, any devil fruit, what would you choose? Or any Zanpakuto, what would you choose? Oh, it's the Ape Ape no Mi easily. It's Lost you, Powers. You re- okay. Because it encompasses so many things. Do you not remember how confused you were when you saw him for the first time? Completely. And they do not explain his powers. At all. And he's just like <laughs> taking dudes' heads off and like all of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the ability to just control essentially reality <laughs> in your own little operating room. Because he can, he can teleport yeah. with that. I know. He can do, like, there's so I much know. functionality to his powers. Part of it might be skewed because he's my favorite One Piece character of all time, but... Interesting. Oh, yeah, easily. Interesting. Law is the best character in One Piece. Fair. Who's your favorite? And then we'll do Straw Hats. Okay. The, it, okay. That's, yeah, 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 two, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's two, it's two different things. questions. It's two separate things. Okay. Outside of the Straw Hats... Favorite character, Ace, Ace, because- That's a good one. I used to be the younger brother. I had an older brother for the longest time and we grew up watching it and I was like, oh, I'm Luffy, you're Ace, you're gonna die. And then I had a little brother who was born and now I'm all I can do is like bump him on the head like I'm Itachi and I'm like, I'm the older brother now. I must be dark and brooding and mess with you as much as I can. Yes, I'm sorry, Sasuke. So- now I like feel the older brother vibes. So I'm going ace outside of outside of the straw hats. All right. What do you and say straw hats wise? Nico Robin. Easy. E- without hesitation. Yeah, 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 She's yeah, yeah, easily yeah. the best character on the crew. Sanjay. I love I love that answer. I love Sanji. I am a I look, 
this is again we've we're yeah. we're, we're given we're yeah, yeah, you yeah, know we're yeah. given controversial things. We talked Hot a lot days. about fairy tale today, but I, <laughs> I am a Sanji over Zoro, and I am not. Yes. I'm not ashamed of it. I I'm not ashamed. I'm not of ashamed it. of it. I'm with you there, but I want I want everyone to like flame me for this. Oh, they're going to, and I cannot wait. I will take your anger and I will break the chains of hatred like I'm Naruto. <laughs> Um, again, you see how dumb that is? Um, but anyway, yeah, Sanjay. I love I love the crew and like Luffy is dope, but I love how like smart Sanjay is. Zoro's like, got you, I'm gonna be the cool brooding guy who's gonna like slash slash. Luffy's like, haha, I'm fun, punch punch. Usopp is like, I'm gonna cry in a corner, I'm gonna be brave for two seconds, save the day. I, I also love him because like God Usopp and everything is incredible. But Sanjay to me is always like been the true vice captain. Like even even as far back as Alabasta and Little Garden, when he's on the phone and he's pretending to be Mr. Prince, like he's the smart guy who's going to get you out of a situation, which is why Luffy allowed him to go off with the ship by himself at a certain point because he knew, all right, Sanji's going to take care of it. If it was Zoro, that could never happen. Zoro's like, I'm going to just kill everyone who tries to touch us. And Zoro is great, don't get me wrong, and he commands respect of the crew, which is great, but Sanjay is a guy you actually need to be your vice captain. And so that people don't think we're just entirely shitting on Zoro, to go back to a, a mm -hmm. moment that you were talking about before, and again, just for clarity, Sanji is better than Zoro, when we were talking about the Luffy versus Usopp fight in Water 7. Yeah. Zoro's moment in that area mm -hmm. is one of my favorite things yeah. that he's ever, just him standing up and being like, you can't waver here because you will lose the respect of Every everyone else. Here. Yeah. You are the captain, act like it, yeah. is such uh, is such a he, wonderful he, moment for him as a first mate. Yeah, he made Luffy grow up. And he's the only one besides Nico Robin or Nami that could do it. Maybe Jimbei now as well. But Sanjay was the OG Luffy, what are you doing? I know. Same, but he's been doing it since the beginning, even in Logetown, when, when the guy was trying to, like, uh, uh, Buggy's crewmate, the second, uh, or mate, first mate, the lion dude, Richie. Oh, Moji. Moji. Uh, and Richie is the lion. Yeah. Like, trying to burn the ship, and he beat him up, and, and even, even in Water 7, he's the one on the train keeping track of Robin. Mm -hmm. Like, and that moment where he's like, I wasn't going to listen to you either way. I'm like, ah, oh, you're so cool. Anyway, I want to know more about him. Like, he's really holding both those characters close to the chest. He's revealed a lot about Sanji and, um, and almost nothing about Zoro. And I cannot wait for that moment. But also, there's still so much more about Sanji that we need to know. Like, the augmentation. Is he Lunarian? Is it just like... Anyway, I have to bring it back because I want to know. What's your Zanpakuto? Hmm... I mean, it'd be soy fongs. I love, I love the design of it. I love the, I love the like glaive with the, yeah. you know, like the I needled love claw. Her shikai, and just I hit you in the same place twice, and you're dead. You're de I love her shikai. Her shikai to me is probably one of my favorites. Her bankai. They faltered. They what faltered. Do you mean they faltered. I don't like it. It's so big and different from her character. And I was like, I wanted like some cool fast movements. And you're like, no, no, no. I'm going to like just blow everything. That's what's <laughs> cool about it though is you would expect it because she is. She's such, she's a nimble character. She's a close quarter yeah. combat kind of a fighter. And then it's like, nope, big gun. Pop. Yeah, fair, 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 fair. I love but it. Like, she's a perfect character. Great haircut. <laughs> great design. She's very you, angry. Is like, that your like wanna... ultimate waifu? She's one of them. You're one of them. She's one of them. Wow. You want to know? Okay, I have a really, I have a throwback, like, OG waifu. It's Sango from Inuyasha. <gasps> Interesting. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Do I have a thing? Do I like girls who are mean? Yeah. I was about to say, I think you do. Wow, I learned which something about myself today. <laughs> I mean, which is also why you're a power man, because power is kind of. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We learned, we learned something about Matt today. We learned something about Matt today. Do you have any more? What are you watching or reading right now that you're really into? So much. So much. What am I watching? Everything. Uh, Chainsaw Man, Bleach. I watched recently. I reincarnated into a slime. Love it. It's incredible. Yeah, that one, that, that one comes up on a lot of people's lists. Yeah. Really, really enjoyed that. Um, someone told me about this one show... Eminence in Shadow, which I've been really enjoying. And then Tower of God. Oh, you're just getting a Tower of God? Yeah. Nice. I started reading it and 
and loving it. Um, and then I watched the Crunchyroll animation, and I love that. And as for reading, what else am I reading that's new? Jump has a good series, uh, uh, Ginka and Gul- Gulag, which I'm enjoying. What do you recommend? What What should I be reading? What should I be watching? We're both watching Chainsaw Man. I mean, yeah, we, we are. watched some of it together. It's a wonderful series. Yes. Um, things that I'm reading right now, a recommendation that I would have is, I'm a little late to the game, but I started reading it earlier this year, Witch Watch. Witch Watch? In Shonen Jump. Yeah. Very fun series. Very good. What is and Witch the, Watch about? Witch Watch is a series about a young witch, and witches have like watchers. Yes, who's, so I've read this. I know exactly what you're talking about. I thought not, it ended. No, it's not done. Did they take like a hiatus at some point? Maybe. It maybe. could have been a, it, yeah. I think they took a hiatus. And then I'm I behind to it, so. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're right. Which watch is good. Wow, I got to continue that then. Well, Tony, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Any uh, Any final words you'd like to give to our audience? If you're listening to this, you probably already watch anime. My little last piece of advice is when you're trying to get a friend into it, be casual about it. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might like it. But, you know, also, it's my thing. And then they'll go, well, no, no, I want it to be my thing, too. And then they'll join in. And then we'll have more Nakama in this group. So we can all Naruto run into Area 51 together. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Mana Podcast. Big thanks. Big thanks to the very talented Tony Revolori. You can find him on Instagram at at... Tony Revolori. That is my name. I will change it eventually. And then I'm going to take it. Yeah, to Tony D. Revolori. Oh, that's actually, I'm going to go in. I'm going to do that as soon as we are done so Uh, that you can't have it. I'm doing it right now. (laughs) Uh, Thanks a lot, Tony. Uh, And thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite app. And please leave a rating and review. For the Mana Podcast, I'm Matt Owens. Thanks for listening.